Let's look at a problem where we're adding two vectors together. Maybe they're velocity vectors or force vectors or displacement vectors. We don't really care. We're just going to add two vectors together uh, so we can learn how to do that. And so down here I have vector C. And vector C has a magnitude of 16.6. .6, and it has a direction of 25 degrees and that's measured counterclockwise from the plus x-axis. And then over here I have vector d, and vector d has a magnitude of 28, so you can see it's longer than vector c by oh, about a little more than 50% longer, that seems to make sense. And we're gonna measure its angle from the y-axis, which would be coming up here, right? We don't have to, we can put our vectors any place we want. And so uh, there's the y axis. And so we measured its direction counterclockwise from the plus y just to be different. And so that is 55.2 degrees. And we want the vector sum of these two. And one way to get a vector sum is to do this graphically. And so the vector sum, let's call it vector E, for want of a better name, and it is C plus D. And so one way to do it is the graphical method. And so we do that by picking up the vector D here. Don't worry, all that stuff will come back. And we put the tail of vector D next to the head of uh, vector C, and then we draw a vector connecting the tail of uh, C to the head of D. And I'm using the uh, physics education technology website uh, vector addition applet, and so I can just click here, and if I move it down in the right place, that is the vector sum, drawing from the tail of the first vector to the head of the last one, no matter how many vectors uh, you've drawn. So this should be vector E. And so we'd expect it to be in what quadrant would this be? Second quadrant. And we would expect it to be um, closer to the y-axis than the x-axis. So when we're done doing this mathematically, uh, this should be um, what we come up with. Very important to check yourself. And so we're going to do this a little differently. We're going to uh, add the vector components together. And we learned how to do this in class. And so this is another example. And so when I add two vectors together, um, I can get the x components of the two vectors. They add together, and that gives me their x component of the sum. And we like to put a little i with a hat here to show that's the x direction. Oops, it's not equals. Let's use the eraser here and clean this up a little. And so erase and erase. OK. And so usually they put a plus here for um, the other side. And then CY plus DY. So that would be the y component of vector E. So you can see we need to get the x and y components of vector D and C. And so vector C, you can break it up into its parts. That's what all component means, right, is part. And so that would be Cx, and this side would be Cy. And we know how to do that, right? I have a right triangle. And I know the hypotenuse is the magnitude of the vector, 16.6. .6. And Cx would be the adjacent side. And so we can use, remember the good old so, ka, toa. And so I want the adjacent side, and I know the hypotenuse. And so we want cosine. So that means cosine theta is the adjacent over the hypotenuse. So the adjacent side is the hypotenuse times cosine theta. A lot of times that's just where I start. I just write that down without going through all this.
And in this case, the adjacent side, we're calling the x component of vector c, cx. And so the hypotenuse is 16.6 and times cosine 25 degrees. Make sure your calculator's in degrees mode, especially those of you in calculus class. And so cx comes out to be about 15. And again, we're not specifying what types of vectors these are. That could be meters, meters per second, newtons if it's force, but we'll leave the units off for this generic example. Now I want to figure out CY. That's a Y there. And so you can see it's the opposite side. And you could use tangent now that we know the adjacent side, but what if we made a mistake here? We'd be compounding that mistake. So I would prefer to go back to sine. So so that means sine theta is the opposite over the hypotenuse. So the opposite side is the hypotenuse times sine theta. And so in this case, CY is 16.6 sine 25. And that comes out to about 7. And so before we move on, let's see if that makes sense. Does it make sense that CX is 15 and CY is 7? Uh, it sure does. We're closer to the x-axis, so the x uh, component should be bigger than the y, and they're both positive. We're here in the first quadrant. Uh, if you do those checks after you get your components, you'll save yourself a lot of mistakes. Now we need to do the same thing for vector d, and uh, let's move our vector back to where it was. And we might see the components a little bit better. So we had them here. Don't worry, all oh, this is coming back. There it is. And so now I want the um, x component. And if you look, and I did this on purpose, the x component would be this side, right? And is that adjacent or opposite? And so this is dx. And then here we have dy. And so I'm going to use the angle I'm given. Sure, you could figure out this angle and make the x component uh, of the adjacent side, but you should be able to handle anything like this. And I like to use the angles I'm given. And so dx is clearly opposite 55.2. And so the opposite side is hypotenuse times sine theta. And so in this case, that's dx. It's a d. And so it's 28, the hypotenuse, the magnitude of vector d, times sine 55.2 degrees. And that comes out to 23. But I know I'm in the second quadrant here. Look at which the direction the x component is pointing, negative x. And so this should be a negative here. So that's negative 23. I'm in the second quadrant. If you do that check on the end, you might catch that. Um, if you measure this angle all the way from the plus x axis, you would get the minus sign when you do the calculation in your calculator if you did a cosine of that angle. I don't recommend doing it that way. I can figure out what the sign should be. I know the second quadrant is negative x and positive y. I know the third quadrant down here is negative x, negative y. And the fourth quadrant is positive x, negative y. And here we have positive x, positive y. And so I know that, so I can decide how to do the signs here. I wouldn't rely on my calculator, although it does work if you know what you're doing. Now, dy we can see is adjacent. And so we're going to use the, um, let's erase that. So we're going to use the cosine to get the y component. And so dy would be 28 cosine 55.2, and that equals 16. And so before I go on, I check. The y component is smaller than the x component, and vector d is closer to the x-axis, further away from the y, so that makes sense and I have a positive y component and a negative x, that makes sense. And so again, before I go on, I make sure uh, things look good.
And so now we need to access this here. And so I'm gonna clean up a little. Plus the racing is kind of the fun part of this. And so there we go. I'm using a program called Desk Task Desk Tastic. Uh, unfortunately, it does not work with the new Mac operating system, but it does work with uh, this one. So it doesn't work with Line or Mountain Line, unfortunately. Maybe they will update it soon. Um, and so vector E is CX, and we figured out, I erased it, but it's down here, right? Is 15 plus DX, which is a negative 23. So it's plus, you add all the components together, but this one happens to have a negative X. And so that's the I components. And then that plus really, it's really a comma. So here's my X component, here's my Y component. And so CY uh, was seven. And then plus DY, which was 16. And so vector E, and I know this writing is uh, bordering on uh, being illegible, but I think you can read it. Try writing on a graphics tablet sometime and you'll see uh, the issue. And so uh, we have our answer. It's negative eight in the X or I direction and 23 in the uh, Y or J direction. And so that sure agrees with our graphical representation here, uh, negative eight. So that would be here. And this would be the Y component all the way up here. And that would be 23. And so a much bigger Y component than the X component. That makes sense. And the X component is negative. Now we want to get the magnitude and direction of vector um, E. And so if I know this side and this side, I should be able to figure out the hypotenuse, right? And so the magnitude of E, use the Pythagorean theorem. This is how we determine magnitude. It's kind of like absolute value, so we use the same symbols. And that would be uh, the X component squared plus the Y component squared. And then we take the square root. And so negative eight squared plus 23 squared take the square root and we get about 24.4. Now we also want to get the direction and so I'm going to clean this up and I'd recommend you do a separate sketch when you get the direction and maybe even this part. And so all this stuff is going to erase and we're just going to write what vector E is and we're going to try and get its direction. So it is all going away for good now. Goodbye. And let's get rid of these vectors. So they go in the trash. But don't worry, they can always make more. And so let's draw our vector E only. And so vector E had a magnitude of 24.4. And we were trying to figure out its direction. You'll see what it going to come out to be here. One more. There we go. And so that is our vector E. You can see we found out it was negative 8 in the X and 23 in the Y. And so we know this. And so that was negative 8. And we know this is 23. And we also figured out the hypotenuse. I'm not going to use that. And so now we want to get the angle. And you have to be careful here, um, especially if you're doing a multiple choice test or using WebAssign. They will want the angle measured counterclockwise from the plus x axis. So the way I like to do this is, you, is going back to TOA. And so that means tangent theta is the opposite over the adjacent. 
And so theta is an inverse tangent of, whoops, of the opposite, which would be um, 23, the y, over negative 8. And if I do that, my calculator tells me the angle is negative 70.8 degrees. So it's putting me down here. And that's 180 degrees off. That's as far off as you can be. And so I know it's off because I have this picture here. I know I'm in the second quadrant. And so your calculator doesn't know where this minus sign is, depending on your calculator. Most don't. It doesn't know if it's up here or down here, so it just assumes to put you in the fourth quadrant. And so what do you have to do if you're 180 degrees off? Add 180. And so that gives me 109.2, which is the angle measured from the plus x axis. If you put that in WebAssign, you'd get a green check. If you put this in, you'd get it wrong. What about, what if you figured out this angle? What would that angle be? Well, you'd subtract 90 from this, right? This would be 19.2 degrees. So you can figure that out. Negative 8 is opposite that. 23 is adjacent. Uh, so you just put in positive 8 when you figured that out. And then you could add 90 to it. Somebody else might figure out this angle. And so what would that be? That would be 70.8, right? And so you could subtract that from 180. The key thing is when it's all said and done, no matter how you do it, you should know it's 109.2 degrees from the plus x axis. So be careful with your calculator. If you are actually in the second quadrant, it will put you in the fourth. And if you're in the third quadrant, it puts you in the first. And so be careful how you do this. If you draw a picture out, you will uh, save yourself some grief.